Hey guys, let's get more news from Dallas Cowboys, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. Dactastic. Cowboys QB owns NFC East and Eagles, especially at home. Whether you're at the end of your coffee, your day, your week or even your rope, welcome to wit's end, asterisk yes, the Dallas Cowboys want coach Mike McCarthy to make a miraculous recovery from a midweek appendectomy. And, sure, they're praying for iconic radio voice Brad Sham to be back in the booth after missing last week's game and being hospitalized over the weekend. But, let's be honest, all they really need to beat the Philadelphia Eagles in Sunday night's NFC East showdown at AT&T Stadium is for Dak Prescott to be, well, Dak Prescott. A sign of how far modern medicine has advanced. In 1975, my mom went to the hospital with acute appendicitis and stayed for a week. McCarthy had the same surgery Wednesday morning, was released that afternoon and is expected to be on the sideline four days later. Meanwhile, Brad Sham, the Cowboys' signature voice since 1976, said he hopes to call the Eagles game after falling ill on the way to last week's against the Seahawks. It's not lost on him that Texas Rangers Hall of Fame radio voice Eric Nadell missed time last season but returned to call his team's championship. Said Sham this week of duplicating the feat, that's the plan. While those, hopefully, warm and fuzzy comeback stories provide a nice backdrop for the most anticipated game of the season, Prescott's play is almost always enough to clobber the Eagles in Arlington. The quarterback owns the NFC East, with a career record of 30-8 against Philly, Washington, and the Giants. But at AT&T Stadium, he's particularly lethal against the Eagles, going 5-1. In those six games, he's completed 70%, 148 of 212, of his passes for 1,711 yards and 12 touchdowns. He has thrown eight interceptions, three coming in his lone home loss to Philly, 37-9 in 2017. With Prescott in uniform, the Eagles' defense has been hapless in Texas. In the six games, the Cowboys have averaged 31 points and in the last three scored 37, 41, and 40. Well wishes to McCarthy. Godspeed, Brad. But, above all else, when wishing to predict a Dallas win here, make sure Dak is healthy and in the building Sunday night at 7.20. Asterisk who wore it best, Dirk Nowitzki or Luka Donich. On December 16, 2009 Dirk debuted a headband and produced a 35-point, 11-rebound night to help the Mavs beat the Thunder to improve to 19-7. Said Dirk of the new look, my hair's so long I've got to rock a headband. It worked, so we'll see. On December 6, 2023, Luca debuted his version of a headband in a 40-point triple-double to help the Mavs wallop the Jazz to improve to 12-8. to Said Luca of his new look, I'm getting longer hair, so I need it so it doesn't fall in my eyes. I don't use gel anymore. Dirk wins because his locks were long and flowing. Luca's hair is still relatively short. Besides, his accessory is less of a headband and more of a strap usually seen on women playing soccer. Also during his career, Dirk once shaved his head and went a month or two with a buzz cut. SHHHHH, don't tell Luca. Parsons wants to be unstoppable against the Eagles. There's no need to state the obvious, but let's do it one more time anyway. The rematch between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles is a high-stakes game that has the potential to send shockwaves through the entire playoff picture at the top of the NFC East and NFC standings. It's something linebacker Micah Parsons understands very well and is prepared for the fight. It's always one of the most important games in football, if not the most important, the first-team All-Pro player said. The intensity is always high, the emotions high, and everyone wants to win. 
it's a fight. You always have to have the ice packs ready. As Parsons explained, it's another ice bag game for the Cowboys, but also for the Eagles, who were soundly defeated in their own stadium at Lincoln Financial Field by the San Francisco 49ers. With that loss, the Cowboys can take the lead in the division by virtue of having one more win in the NFC East than the Eagles, and draw a very clear line toward first place in the conference. That can only happen if they don't let the Eagles blow them away this weekend. Parsons and the Cowboys understand the task, but they won't make the same mistake they made in Week 5 against the 49ers, overplaying the competition while the 49ers played relaxed and confident en route to a big win. The only thing that matters now is this game and, even with everything at stake, it is still just another game on the regular season schedule, that is, one more obstacle to overcome on the way to their ultimate goal. I feel like, at the end of the day, it's the same thing, Parsons said. Every week you have to win or it will affect your long-term goals. The key is just winning and that's the only thing that matters. The first matchup ended in a narrow five-point loss to the Eagles in hostile territory that ultimately came down to a game of inches, which should invoke confidence in Dallas' ability to get the job done in Week 14, and especially a defense that limited Jalen Hurts to just over 200 passing yards and an A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith leading a receiving core that, individually, didn't come close to 100 receiving yards, abruptly ending Brown's streak of 125-plus yard games. And after seeing what the 49ers' defense was able to do in Philadelphia, Parsons sees no reason why the Cowboys can't replicate that effort in Dallas. Dallas Cowboys vs. Philadelphia Eagles Injury Update Tyron, Zach Martin, Slay, Julio Jones Miss Practice both the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles are being strategic when it comes to being rested and ready for this week's Sunday night football showdown for the lead in the NFC East. For the Cowboys on Thursday, two all-time offensive line greats all-pro left tackle Tyron Smith and all-pro right guard Zach Martin did not practice. There are not expected to be injury issues there come Sunday at AT&T Stadium. Running back Rico Dowdle was limited with an ankle injury while tight end Peyton Henderson was a full participant with an ankle injury as he comes off the 21-day window list. And of course there is the matter of coach Mike McCarthy, who underwent an appendectomy on Wednesday. The plan is for McCarthy to return to work at the Star on Friday and to coach his 9-3 Cowboys in the game on Sunday. McCarthy has been participating in meetings virtually while coordinator Brian Schottenheimer runs the Texas Coast offense in his stead. He's actually very involved, Schottenheimer said of McCarthy's remote availability. He's in good spirits. It's always good when he has a lot of suggestions when you talk to him on the phone. Well, what do you think of this? That's when I know he's feeling good. Meanwhile, the 10-2 Eagles on Thursday had Fletcher Cox, Groin, and Dallas Goddard as full participants as the Eagles in the team's first full practice of the week. Goddard is notable as he is to return from a forearm injury he suffered in the Week 9 matchup against the Cowboys. I'm really excited, Goddard said. I feel like I'm in a really good position to come back and play as much as they'll let me. Wide receiver Julio Jones, groin injury, and cornerback Darius Slay, rest slash knee, stayed out of the Eagles' workout. Linebacker Zach Cunningham missed last Sunday's loss against the 49ers with a hamstring injury, but was a limited participant on Thursday as Philly is also working to get newly signed Shaq Leonard integrated at some point. And you fan, what do you think of the Zach Martin situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.